wait a second, this isn't the luggage that I left for the trip with. And where did this tote bag come from? Clearly, we have a lot to talk about. Hello everybody, it's Lauren from It's The Kellys, and this video is a part two to my packing video for my last trip when I spent two weeks in the Middle East. So that was my packing video, and today I'm going to be unpacking, which is a really fun type of video that I know a lot of you guys enjoy. Basically, while I unpack, I go over everything I used, everything I didn't use, did I get rid of anything, what did I buy, what did I learn, and how would I pack differently if I did this trip again? Now, I think a series like this is very helpful, especially if this is a trip that you will be going on in the near future, because you can use the packing video to see all of the outfits and everything that I am planning on doing. And then you can watch this video after to see how that all went and what I learned. So buckle up you guys, cause we've got a lot to talk about. So first let's remind you of where I went. First, I went to my 93rd country of the Maldives where I spent time on the beach and got my open water scuba certification. Then I went to country 94, which was Oman, where I had a private tour, just myself and my guide, all around Oman for four days. And then I went to country 95, which was Saudi Arabia, which was super exciting to go to, especially because it basically just opened for tourism. I also had a 24 hour layover in Istanbul, Turkey, which is a place that I've been to before, but it's always a great place to go back to. Now, if you watched my packing video, you know that I was mostly worried about two different things. One, how much coverage do I really need as a woman going to three different Muslim countries? And also two, the seven kilo weight limit on all of these different airlines. In that video, you guys, I was flipping out and ended up not bringing a roller bag and actually doing a backpack. And you guys know I'm not much of a backpack girl. I don't enjoy it. I have a very bad back and these airports are huge. You've got 15 to 17 pounds on your back. You're in pain. You're waiting in line at customs or security. And then guess what? When you're traveling alone and you have to go to the bathroom, you have to bring your bag into the bathroom with you. And those bathrooms were disgusting and wet and I had to throw the backpack down on the ground. It's not ideal roller girl for life. So let's address the elephant in the room. This beautiful pink Samsonite roller bag right here. Here's the thing, from Detroit to Turkey, to Dubai, to the Maldives, to Mumbai, I never got my bag weighed once, never. They didn't even look at my bag. They didn't even have a scale. I was so worried for nothing. And by the time I got to my seven hour layover in Mumbai, which was kind of halfway through my trip, I texted Brian practically crying and said, I'm buying a suitcase. And he's like, I figured. So at the Mumbai airport, I saw this little beauty here. It is from Samsonite and you guys will see all the details when I open it up to unpack it. So then I transferred everything from the backpack into here and then I saw this beautiful little bag. It was only like 20 bucks. I made the joke that it just fell off the shelf and fell right onto the suitcase. That's pretty much what happened. And then I asked at the airport what to do with the backpack because I wasn't going to bring it home with me. And I did donate it to the airport. Now you're probably wondering how all the rest of my flights went with these two bags. I never got weighed once on my whole trip. That's nine flights. I am so beyond frustrated because there were so many things in that packing video and even after that I took out or swapped out because I was so worried about getting my bag weighed. And I had heard horror stories, not just paying more and checking your bag. I could care less about that. People having to throw away things. I was worried. Like I weighed every single 
item of clothing so that I would pick the skirt that weighs less. I brought a purse that I didn't like because it was lighter than my favorite travel purse. I didn't bring an extra pair of eyeglasses because of the weight. And guess what? I lost my glasses and was blind for half of the trip. It's ridiculous. I'm a 240 pound woman and if I am flying and there's a 100 pound woman next to me, is our carry-on weight really going to make that much of a difference? That's it. Rant over. I've said it before and I will say it again. I have now been to 95 countries and all seven continents and I've only been weighed twice. I'm not worrying about it anymore. I'm just not. The stress I put myself through to pack for this trip when I didn't need to is ridiculous. Now, before I unpack everything in these bags, I do want to talk about the coverage a little bit. I know you guys are really curious, especially if you are women wanting to go visit over there. Now, in the Maldives, I was staying on a local island named Digura. You're supposed to be covered up and you're not supposed to wear skimpy clothes unless you are on the bikini beach. And there were signs everywhere that said no bikinis allowed. Now, were there women wearing skimpy bikinis and shorts and tank tops yes was that me no i got sunburned one day and i wanted to be covered in oman it was exactly how i expected as long as your shoulders were covered and your knees were covered you were fine you didn't have to wear an abaya and cover your hair unless you were at the mosque and the day that i went hiking and swimming you were totally allowed to look like you were going hiking and swimming and then in saudi arabia that was definitely the most interesting of all three. They've been going through a lot of changes where I had read multiple articles and blogs about the fact that women don't have to cover their hair and don't have to wear a black abaya anymore. So I was like, cool, okay, because I also read some articles and blogs that were like, you might still want to do that. So I went prepared for both. And every single woman that I saw was in a black abaya, no other colors. Their hair was covered, most of their face was covered, and sometimes even their eyes were covered. I was the only person I saw with my hair out. And I was still covered from my neck to my wrists and all the way down to my ankles, but I was a little bit more colorful. I definitely stood out a bit. It was only men that I saw out during the day. They all stared at me. Most of them didn't talk. A couple of them hissed at me, but I kind of figured out that they were just as culture shocked seeing me as I was going to their country and seeing the way that they lived. You get what I mean? And anytime I went into a shop to buy something or to get food, everyone was extremely nice and very welcoming. Would I go back to all three countries? Honestly, I don't really need to go to the Maldives again. But Oman and Saudi Arabia, absolutely. Let's start unpacking. And we will start with my personal item. First, I have my purse. I have two phones, side by side, travel wallet. This had my cards and my money. This had my passport. I had my new strips. I had my vitamins. I had my chapstick. This was awesome. And I still have a bunch of currency. I do have a portable charger, which is a brand new one and no bueno. It was horrible. I can't even, no. Don't ever get a portable charger that's not anchor. Sleep mask, headphones, pens. I did totally buy some like real bougie Gucci chapstick. Spent way too much money on it. Sometimes you're really bored at duty free, okay? I have my little water bottle, which is some of my merch. It says, do I look like I check bags? So this came in really handy. Still some in there. It's part of my merch too. It says seven continents. And on the back, all seven continents checked off. I also have my laptop because I'm a working girl. Somebody's got to run this YouTube. I have my little fill-in puzzles. This is just a little wallet that I had all of my American money in. And I still have some left, you guys. We are under budget. Heck yeah. Pen I stole from the Sheridan. Electronic sunglasses, baby wipes, and Kleenex, especially in case you go into a bathroom where there's no tissue. This is a little baggie full of magnets. I collect them. And then these are little baggies full of jewelry that I bought. And you guys, a lot of shopkeepers in these countries were just giving me stuff, giving it away. They were like, here you go, princess. Okay. 
And then I've got my two toiletry bags. This is my liquid one. I bought a lot of oils. Oils are really big over there where it's kind of like perfume. Rub it on and your scent just lasts a lot longer. I bought two and then got two as a gift. Other than that in here, I have a lot of makeup that I didn't really wear. And the only other thing that I bought was some after sun care because I did get pretty sunburned in the Maldives one day. I did buy a newer thing of powder makeup when I got a little bit more tan. And I bought this new thing of Gucci eyeshadow because again, duty free and I was bored. And I was under budget, okay? This bag that is from stuff I bought at the airport. And in there, I do have this base fanny pack full of my electronics, Insta360, and I had my GoPro and travel tripod. This is some really nice smelling tea, Arabic coffee, Turkish delight, macarons I got from the Istanbul airport, mmm, some sweets from Oman. And at the mosque, they gave me a copy of the Quran for Brian to put in our library. Now let's move on to this guy. It's pretty packed, guys. Luckily, I'm an expert. This is everything I wore on the plane. I had my Tevas. My very first couple of days, I did get blisters from them because I had never worn them and wore them probably 85% of the trip. I wore my Travel Off and Pack Well merch shirt with those blue Old Navy joggers. I could have worn these every single day. Love these. I also wore those a lot underneath skirts and dresses, especially in Saudi Arabia. So I actually wore them and had this navy skirt over it. I also was wearing it with this beautiful green abaya. Look at that gorgeous embroidery, kind of wearing it almost as a coat in Istanbul because it was so cold. And then when I couldn't stand how cold it was anymore, I bought this little poncho. Now I can show you everything that's in the bag. So this is the inside, this side that's covered with a zipper and I'll get into that. And then you've got this side with some compression. Now this compression is removable and it's interesting because it does come off like this and it does hang. And this is all my dirty underwear. And then underneath the compression is an extra. So this was my Abaya cover-up kind of thing that I had made myself and I did wear it a lot. Now you would think I brought that one so I was good, right? <laughs> no, I bought a lot more. They're beautiful. I don't know how many Abayas I need, but guess what? I've got a lot now. This is a beautiful two-piece eggplant color one and I bought this in Saudi Arabia and wore it at the floating mosque and did a really beautiful photo shoot with it. I'm so glad that I bought it. At the same shop I did buy this one too which is a beautiful teal color with some gold accents. I wore it for a couple of quick pictures and then while I was there I just bought this basic blue one too. As for the rest of the side, I do have two cute little stuffed animals that I bought for my nephews. I do have my belt, which I did wear a couple of times. And then my packing cube, two bathing suits. Now, could I have just brought one? Yes. However, I have been on a trip before where I only brought one bathing suit and it broke. And it's not easy to find a bathing suit when you're plus size in a foreign country. There were no bathing suits for sale on this tiny little island in the Maldives. So I brought two and I wore them both. This is a fun little caftan dress that I bought in the souk in Oman. And I did wear it once. My green dress, totally wore a couple times. Green tank top, totally wore a couple times. My beautiful flowy skirt that I wore for my desert photo shoot. I almost left this behind and I'm so glad that I brought it with me. My little tan colored dress, I did wear this and actually got a ton of compliments from you guys, so thank you. And then this is my two piece outfit and I wore this in the Maldives a couple times. In this zipper here, I have my little scuba notebook because I did have to finish my course. Two little packets of saffron and I have my air tag just in case. 
we're almost done. This is my dry bag from Side by Side. I brought it especially for scuba diving and it was great. I love this one. This is another little caftan that I bought while I was in Oman and I wore it in Saudi Arabia. There were a couple of days that my feet hurt so bad in the Maldives because I had blisters. Walked into a shop, found these shoes, paid like $4 for them and wore them for the rest of the Maldives trip and then never wore them again. Could have left them there and donated them, but I like the color. I thought they were cute. My flat iron, I didn't use it once. I didn't do my hair at all. I'm so mad that I brought it. These are my birdies. Like I said, I wore my Tevas like 85% of the time, but I did wear these a lot. Super, super comfortable to travel in and they don't take up any packing space. Trip Travel Gear Backpack definitely used this a little bit. This was great for my hike, packing overnight for the desert without having to bring this huge bag. Always a great essential to have. And then everything else is stuff that I bought. So this is a cute little plate that I got in the Maldives. I have this beautiful scarf that I got in Oman at the souk. I also bought this one because I loved the colors and it has a little bit of a sparkle to it. This is a shirt from the Maldives, just a t-shirt. I might never wear it, but whatever. And then I've got a couple more souvenirs. This is just a cute whatever. We'll put it right there. I had these wrapped in this shirt, just in their trinket box. It's like a dollar, you guys. And then this, I liked that. Then the yummiest thing of all, my Karak tea. Oh, so good, you guys. You have this hot and you put some saffron in it. Oh, it's the best thing ever. I need to go make some of this after I film this video. Now I did release a video showing this neck pillow with all the stuff I put inside of it. I tested four of them, brought my favorite one on the trip and showed you how well it went. Look at all that. One shirt, two shirt, three shirt, a scarf. Oh, look at the scarf, you guys. Another scarf, a tank top pair of pants, another scarf. This one matches that teal abaya. And then another scarf. This one matches that green abaya. I can't believe I ever made fun of this travel hack. Thank you to whoever messaged me on Instagram the day that I was practically crying and said, why don't you get one of those hollowed out neck pillows? I owe my life to you couple items I did get rid of. Let me explain something real quick. Sometimes, knowing that I like to shop, I bring items that I either got at the thrift store, are in my donation bin, or were on total clearance, like I'm talking $2 t-shirts. Sometimes I bring stuff like that, so that if I need to get rid of something to make room for something else, then it's okay. I donate it, and if I never see it again, it's fine. The shorts that I had brought were from the donation bin and I got rid of my mustard colored shirt that was in my donation bin as well. I was totally fine leaving that behind. I also left behind two scarves that I had packed to be prepared. I bought other scarves and I liked those better. Now, if I were to go on this trip again, how would I pack differently? I know that I can wear those pair of joggers every single day with a t-shirt and be completely casual. But I don't always just like to wear the basics. As much as I did wear that, I do a lot of really cool photo shoots while I travel and I like to have some really cool outfits while I do that. I think I could get rid of a couple of t-shirts. I did feel like I missed something for a chilly evening. It was definitely cold in Oman when we were in the desert and the mountains overnight. And when I was in Istanbul for 24 hours, it was pretty cold. So there you guys have it. Those were my new bags. That was everything I bought. I told you guys everything I left behind, my experience. I hope this was helpful. I had such an amazing time. I absolutely loved Oman. I think it was honestly one of my favorite trips. I really am considering hosting a group trip there hopefully next year. So if you guys are interested in potentially going to Oman with me, comment down below and let me know. It was a gorgeous place. It has everything. And please stay tuned for the travel vlogs. I filmed my entire trip and now that I'm home, I am working endlessly to try to create these beautiful vlogs for you guys so that you can experience it the way that I did. And now that I'm home, let me tell you guys, like, don't be scared of the Middle East. I didn't even tell 
a lot of people that I was close with that I was going because so many people were just like, I don't think that's such a good idea. You don't even know. Like you've never even been there. Some people don't even have a passport and they're like, you shouldn't go there. Guys, it was incredibly peaceful. I know there's stuff going on, current events in countries somewhat close to where I was, but you would never know that anything was going on while I was over there, honestly. I felt perfectly safe. I walked around during the day by myself. I walked around at night by myself. I shopped, I dined, I hiked, I rode a camel, I ate a camel. We picked up hitchhikers. I laughed with locals. I asked them questions about their religion and everyone was so incredibly nice and welcoming. I was in Oman, I was in Saudi Arabia and it was fine. Talk to people that have been there recently. Talk to people that live there. That's what travel is all about. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. Again, if you are planning a trip to the Middle East, especially as a solo traveler, I hope I helped you prepare. I totally bought this bracelet too. <laughs> and another one upstairs, because I wore that yesterday. Am I forgetting anything else? I don't know, you'll see it in the vlogs. I hope you're subscribed to this channel, especially if you wanna travel often and pack well like I do. I've got five more countries to go to 100. Stick with me and you can watch the whole way. I'll see you in the next video, bye. Oh, I gotta get up now. Ugh. And check out our merch store.